Hey guys, uh, so we're getting into part seven. Um, I got the block on the engine stand. I'm gonna show you guys measuring mains. Um, and then uh, I didn't realize that I wasn't videoing earlier and I put the cam bearing in. So I'll show you guys how to put the cam bearing in, but I've already got the cam bearing installed, so I'm not gonna uninstall it. But I'll show you how we put the cam bearing in and the tool that we use. Um, but anyways, I will, uh, I'm gonna bang, I'm gonna pull these main caps off. We're gonna put the bearings in, we're gonna put the main caps on. And just for simplicity's sake, I'll, I'll bring you guys back off of um, time lapse and I'll, I'll measure a couple of them. I'm, I will measure all of them, but I'm not gonna measure all of them just, just to keep the video um, within, you know, a decent length here. Um, and this block is actually a different block than the one that we were doing. The specs are exactly the same and we have checked the mains already, but I didn't have time to wash the block today. So this is one that I already had ready to go. So we're gonna use this block to finish, finish off. Like I said, it's the same block. I just didn't have time to clean and get it back in the jet wash. So uh, simplicity's sake, um, we'll use this block and uh, not have to wait a day. So, all right, I'm gonna put it on time-lapse here. Uh, pull the main caps off, I'm gonna put the bearings in and then I'll bring you, I'll come back and we'll check a few main bearings, see what our oil clearance is gonna be. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay. So you can see, uh, just pulling the uh, main cap bolts out. Just set them all out, make sure you got them on something clean. All right, so thought I better mention a couple things here um, before I start putting the bearings in. So here's the bearings. Um, these are just P-series bearings from um, Molly, Molly Clevite. So anyways, um, these are the oil squirters. Now these oil squirters, now I guess we'll talk about oil squirters here. Um, so you can buy aluminum oil squirters. There's more than one company makes them. Um, Attitude makes them. Um, these ones are easy for me to get here in Canada. So I use these a lot. Um, Depending on what you got going on for an engine, these are the ones that are gonna come in your kit. If you're running um, a Dodge truck application, you wanna use the long ones. There is shorter ones. Um, they're like they're like about that length. Um, the, this is actually a plug for a Commoner 059, but they're about that length and they're usually clear. Don't use those ones for this application. You wanna use this style. Um, now, this engine isn't gonna be anything special as far as a horsepower engine goes is gonna be like 300 350 horsepower at the wheels so you could use these if you want to if you want to do um if you just for extra insurance now these don't usually have an issue as long as you're using good oil filters um and you know you don't whack it with something when you're putting it together um you know you do see the odd one of these fail but not very many and these are made out of pretty good plastic so now these go into the block on each cylinder and basically they're the oil squirters that squirt in there so on each journal, there's one. So how I put them in is you take that, if you take a Phillips screwdriver, that has a little bit of a taper on it, they're not very hard to get in, and then just shove them down until they stop. So super easy to do. And like I said, you can, um, you can use um, a center punch works as well. I just like these because you have a good handle to push on, right? And like I said, you don't have to push that hard. Now, Putting the bearings in before I put you guys back on time lapse here. You want to make sure this surface is clean, dry. You don't want oil on it. I set tang side first, and then all you do is just shove it in, and then make it equal on both sides. There will be it will sit up high on one side, but make it equal on both sides. Now, um, that being said, when you're putting your bolts back in, you want to put a drop of oil on each one, but literally a drop. You don't need a bunch, just a drop of oil. If you're doing studs, you, I use lube from for the studs, the ARP lube, or whatever brand you happen to be using. Um, and uh, yeah, and then you do the same thing on your cap side. Just roll the bearing tank. I do tang side first. Honestly, I don't think it makes a difference. I just like doing the tang side first so that you can locate the bearing where it's gonna sit and then you can slide it in. So I'm gonna put you guys back on time lapse here now. Uh, I'm going to get the bearings in and the oil squirters and then we'll got all this torque down and then I'll bring you guys in for um, checking oil clearances. So something I wanted to show here is if you look at these, the main caps, the main caps on these are always going to be, they're always going to be marked. 
Um, get one. Yeah, so you can just see the three on there. Now, an um, easy way, because I have seen guys put these on backwards, and it's not really rocket science. Um, easy way to tell is tang on bearing on the cap is always going to be on the same side as tang on the rod, on the, the main, on the block. So that's an easy way to tell as far as that goes. So if you're putting them together, they, all of the numbers are going to be lined up the same. And then your tang is always going to be tang to tang. So, so just going in, uh, putting the main bolts in, snugging them down and torquing everything. The three processes. And then uh, coming along and I'm going to check a bunch of the mains here in a sec. <clears throat> Just checking all the main sizes, make sure that you're good. And then here I'm back. All right, guys, so I got the, uh, the mains all torqued with the bearings in there. I've checked all of the, uh, I've checked them all the mains, but just I'll show you guys um, how we're doing it here. And I got about between three and three and a half thou oil clearance, which is uh, sufficient for what we're doing. Um, it's about where I would like to see it. Your spec on these is one and a, uh, 1.7, so one and seven tenths to four and seven tenths. Um, I don't know. Need a camera guy doing this stuff. So. Let's see if I can get you guys in the frame here. So you can see that's where we're coming into, and that's three and a half. And then I usually I measure. So what I do is I, uh, it's hard to do it while you're watching the camera. It's kind of a three-eyed, four-hand person job. So there again, um, you measure from here to here and then here and then here to here on it just to make sure that everything's round. And there is, you will get little tiny marks in the bearing from doing it, but there isn't anything you can do about it. And the marks, you can't feel them. It's literally just shines the, the coating on the bearing, so it doesn't hurt anything. Um, I have... Uh, I've taken a few of my motors apart that, you know, have a lot of kilometers on them or high horsepower stuff that you tear apart just to make sure nothing's screwed up. And those marks will still be in there. So that tells you something, you know, as far as, you know, there's no, you're not damaging anything. So now we've got that done. What we're going to do is I'm going to pull those caps back off. Um, I'm going to grab the crank. I'm just going to do... Um, I'll probably do that off camera just because it's it's easier. I don't want to get the camera covered in brake cleaning crap. So um, I'm just going to brake clean it and blow dry it off real good. Make sure there's nothing in it, which has we've already done and, and brushed the journals and stuff. Um, but I just want to make sure that there's nothing funky going on in there. Um, and then we will all lube the mains up and we'll set the crankshaft. We'll check the end play um, and then uh, we'll see how much more we're going to do tonight. So guys, we got the, the crankshafts all bolted in there now, uh, torqued down. Uh, the torque sequence on this is 44, 66, both foot pounds, and then 90 degrees. Um, and then I marked them after I torqued them because then I know they're torqued. Uh, just something I picked up a long time ago. If you're going to torque it, um, final torque something, you mark it, and then you don't have to uh, guess whether or not you've torqued it, that kind of thing. So. Um, something that I did want to mention is the the stuff that I use is Molly Clevite um, bearing guard, and the stuff is I just wanted to add a little bit more to the thrust bearing, but it's like really thick stuff. So um, also something else that I was going to mention too, I was talking about plastic gauge. 
And plastic gauge I use, I do use, um, but being that I had just measured the crankshaft, I had just uh, measured the mains um, and were in the middle to high end of spec, I wasn't too concerned about a race engine, I would always check it. But what I'll do is I will, just for the guys that have never used plastic gauge um, or don't have access to a dial bore gauge, um, you can use plastic gauge. There again, I recommend a dial bore gauge, but um, you know if you don't have one, then that poses an issue, right? So <clears throat> I will plastic gauge some of the rod bearings for you guys, um, just so you can see the process of doing it, um, if you want to see that. So the crankshaft is set. We don't have to take crankshaft out again. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, something I didn't show you guys on the rods, is uh, aligning the rods to make sure that the rod is straight. And this is something that a lot of people actually don't do. Um, and we do it on all of our engines that we're assembling. Um, so what I'll do is I, I'm going to throw a bag over top of this because I don't know if we're going to do any more with this today. Um, I might put the front timing case on and just see how long it takes to do the, the, the couple of other things that I want to do. Um, and then we'll come back to this. But um, I'm going to go over to the rod aligner and I'm going to show you guys how you check the, rod, the alignment on a rod. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, so I'll catch you over there. All right, gentlemen. We are over here to check a rod. So this is a Sunin rod aligning checker. Um, so depending on, they're different for doing different stuff, but the setup that you use for doing Cummins, you put the rod, you get the rod in here and that aligns it this way and the jig is straight from here to here. And then you put a wrist pin in it. And then this piece here, you slide up against, and you guys will be able to see down there too well or not. But anyways, what you do is, is that you check, I'll put you guys on the stand here. What you do is, is you check in here and you can actually see like if there's if it's twisted you'll be able to see a gap and i know these rods are, are good because we've already checked them but this is something that a lot of places don't do a lot of people don't do and basically the rod will sometimes not be straight and you can straighten them a little bit because if they start out straight, they tend not to bend. Personally, if they're not straight for me, um, we throw them away. But this is a good way to tell um, because it is hard to measure. You can measure with piston protrusion and stuff because if you get a rod that's way different than the rest, there's something wrong with it. But if the rod is bent, it'll always be twisted. So this is an easy way. You put it in the jig and check it. This is an easy way to tell if the rod is bent. And then, because if the rod is bent even, you know, a thou or half a thou, um, you're gonna see it here in a large amount. So this is something that we do to all of the rods when we're doing them. Um, that's definitely, there again, I don't know if you really need to do it, but I have the equipment, so we're gonna do it. So, um, and we do find, ah, I would say maybe not on like on 12 valve, we're just talking 12 valve stuff. Maybe one in 10 sets that'll have an issue. But one in 10 sets is one in 10 sets. So one in 10 engines. So I just like to forewarn. So that's how you that's how you do that anyway. So um, now I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna do we're gonna put the oil cooler on and the oil um, filter housing. And I'm going to show you a couple things in the oil filter housing that you want to look at while you're doing this. Um, and then I'm actually going to post a video of just doing the oil filter housing setup, taking it on and off, um, because I've had a couple guys ask about that. So that's something we will do um, next.